My name is Mr. Opog. Today we will be learning more about subtraction with whole numbers. Remember that previously we used a variety of strategies including place value and regrouping to subtract. So my first question to you is which of those do you remember? Good to thinking about that for a little bit. Today we're going to further our work with regrouping as a subtraction strategy to find the difference between two five-digit numbers and we're going to use addition to check our work. Right. Now, if you have your Ready Classroom Mathematics work text available, please join me on page 81. If you don't, that's fine. Have a piece of paper with a pen or pencil or a marker and a whiteboard. And you may also want to consider having some grid paper as a tool for us today. Press pause right now. Go ahead and make sure you have all of your materials together. And then when you're ready to get started, press play. So for our time together today, we are going to use the standard algorithm to subtract greater numbers. All right, here we go. As always, we want to go ahead and make sense of the problem. We want to make sure that we are clear on what the problem is about, what we're trying to find out, and pulling out that important information. So let's go ahead and get started in our three reads. I'll read it first really loudly for you, and then we will go ahead and start our work together. First, here we go. <clears throat> Find the difference, 68,408 minus 41,923. Use the standard algorithm to subtract, then use addition to check whether your answer is correct. All right, press pause right now, and I'd like you to think, what is this problem about? Go ahead and share your answer out to me or someone that might be next to you or working with you. And then when you're ready, go ahead and press play, and we'll go ahead and continue. All right, if you thought subtraction and checking your work with addition as, as what this problem is about, awesome, we're in a good spot. Let's go ahead and do our second read. Now, I'd like you to read out loud with me. Here we go. Read it with me out loud together. Find the difference, 68,408 minus 41,923. Use the standard algorithm to subtract, then use addition to check whether your answer is correct. Now, this time I'd like you to think about what are you trying to find out? Right, so go ahead and pause, share out your thinking with me virtually, or share out your thinking with a partner at work that's at your, at your house or might be with you, and then we'll go ahead and press play and continue. All right, so hmm, what are you trying to find out? Are you, did you say the difference between two numbers and then the sum to make sure we're correct? If you did, awesome, nice work, or something along those lines, we're in a good spot. Here we go. Let's go ahead to read number three. Read it with me out loud. Here we go. Find the difference, 68,408 minus 41,923. Use the standard algorithm to subtract. Then use addition to check whether your answer is correct. So this time what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to, in your work text, go ahead and circle the important information. And this could be numbers, it could be words, whatever you think it's in, that's important. What, is, what information is important in this problem? All right, when you're done, press play and we'll continue together. All right, thinking about what information is important. 68,408, you might have circled or written that down. 41,923 might also be something you have indicated as important. You might also have, have circled the word subtract or standard algorithm. Um, and perhaps you, you circled or underlined the word addition as a check. Right? Awesome. Great job, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and move forward. Here we go. Next, we're going to go ahead and take some time for you to solve and support your thinking. Now, what I'd like you to do is go ahead, when, when you're ready, pause the video on your paper or in your work text or, or on your whiteboard, wherever you're capturing your ideas. Go ahead and solve this problem to the best of your ability using whichever strategies you can remember to have this problem be solved successfully. Right, of course, we have our, our grid paper as a tool that we could potentially use, but use whatever tools you have access to and whatever tools, tools you feel most comfortable with. Right? If you get done early, 
meaning it gets done really quickly, try to solve it a second time, all right? So we can have two strategies to play with today, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a moment, go ahead and pause so you can solve and support your thinking. When you're ready to return, press play so we can move forward together. All right, welcome back. I'm looking forward to exploring the different ways you might have solved this problem. Let's go ahead and move onwards. Here we go. Of course, before we get before we get looking at other strategies, we like to share our thinking out loud. So what I'd like you to do is if you're with somebody, go ahead and share your thinking on how you started this problem. So start by saying, I started with, and go ahead and fill in the blank. Now, if you're not with anybody, if you're doing this by yourself, go ahead and talk to me. All right, talk as loudly and as clearly as you can. Infuse some of that academic language in there and go ahead and share your thinking with me or with a partner. When you're ready to continue together, go ahead and press play. All right, so there are many ways that we could have solved this problem. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what we might have considered for this particular problem that we have here today. Let's go ahead and take a look at a strategy that we might have used. In this strategy, remember, we used regrouping as part of that standard algorithm, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what this might look like for us. In the ones column, we have eight ones minus three ones to give us five ones. Right? Shifting over to the tens, notice we have zero tens and two tens. Well, that doesn't work out, right? We need to regroup. So we're going to go ahead and look towards the hundreds column. We notice we have four hundreds, which is the same thing as three hundreds and ten tens. So now we can do ten minus two to give us eight in that tens column, right? In the hundreds, let's, again, we have that three minus nine. Oh, well, now we have to regroup again. So here we go. Eight thousands can also be written as seven thousands and ten hundreds. So that ten hundreds will add to the three to give us that thirteen, right? So then we can do thirteen minus nine to give us four. Right? Looking back at our thousands, we have seven and one. Seven minus one is six. And then looking at our ten thousands column, we have six and four to give us two. So our difference, if you will, is 26,485. All right, well now let's see if this makes sense. We gotta check our work. In this example, we decompose the 26,485, okay? So if you notice, we have the 20,000, 6,000, 480, and five. So let's go ahead and, and see how this works out for us. So we're gonna take the 41,923, we're going to add 20,000 to give us 61,923. To that number, we're then going to add 6,000. Right? And that sum is 67,923. We're then going to take the 67,923 and add 400, which will give us 68,323. 68,323 plus 80. Right. We'll result with our sum being 68,403. And then 68,403 plus 5 gives us 68,408 as our sum. So this checks out. When we add those two numbers together, we know that our answer is correct. Right. So I'm going to give you a pause. I'm going to back up a moment. Take a moment, and I'd like you to consider... How is your strategy the same as what we have on our screen here, and how is it different? All right, so take a moment and pause. Come back when you're ready to move forward. So again, when we're subtracting, we're going to, again, keep that idea of our standard algorithm through the use of regrouping. But we might have added differently, so let's go ahead and take a look at what that might look like. Maybe you opted for this route. Okay, maybe you said, okay, five plus three gives us eight. Eight tens plus two tens is 100 and zero tens. Right? 
nine hundreds plus four hundreds plus one hundred gives us fourteen hundred or one thousand, right? And four hundred. One thousand plus six thousand plus another one thousand gives us eight thousand. And then we have our two for twenty thousand plus the four for forty thousand to give us the six for sixty thousand. So sixty-eight thousand four hundred and eight. Again, when we put those two numbers together, right? When we, when we add the 26,485 plus the 41,923, we get 68,408, which is what we started with, right? So our answer checks. Now let's back this up a moment. I'll ask this again. How does your strategy compare with this one? How is it the same and how is it different? Go ahead and take a moment to pause and think and share out the differences that you notice. Come talk to me or talk to somebody in the house or at your wherever you're working and share out your thinking. When you're ready to come back, press play. Now let's take a look at our model. We can use the standard algorithm for subtraction to subtract, okay? To do this, of course, we're gonna line up the numbers and subtract from right to left. Now notice again, we'll start with the ones. We did eight minus three, that gives us five, right? And now we're gonna say, okay, well, we need to regroup if we need to. Well, why do we need to regroup in this problem? Right? And again, to answer that, remember, there weren't enough tens to subtract. Remember, we had zero tens minus two tens. We needed to regroup, right? So then what we did is we, we regrouped four hundreds as three hundreds and 10 tens. We wrote that above the problem. So now we were able to subtract the tens. We're going to go ahead and finish solving the problem coming up on the next page, right? We can also use the relationship between addition and subtraction to check our work, right? So we'll add the difference to the number being subtracted, right? So that way we can check whether the sum is the same as the initial number in the subtraction problem. We're going to go ahead and finish this as well. All right, so remember, the, the, the number being subtracted was at 41,923. To that, we were going to add our answer. Okay, Let's go ahead and play with this a little bit more. Right. So on 83, page 83, we're going to go ahead and connect it. Great. I'm going to go ahead and read through these problems with you first, then give you an opportunity to work on them, and then we'll come back and, and talk through them. All right, so number one, finish solving the problem by subtracting the hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands. Write your answer in the boxes shown. Number two, why did you need to regroup a second time? Problem three, look at the second model it. Write your answer from problem one in the box as shown from the top number. Add to finish solving the problem. Regroup when you need to. Problem four, is your sum in problem three the same as the number you subtracted from in problem one? Fill in the blank. Is your answer to problem one correct? Go ahead and fill in the blank there. And problem five, how is using addition to check an answer to a subtraction problem different than using estimation? Okay, so take a moment, go ahead and press pause. I'd like you to work on your own on page 83, and then we'll come back together to review our answers. Okay, so go ahead and press pause now. Come back when you're ready. So for number one, you might have thought, you know, if we're going to head, go ahead and finish solving the problem, we needed to add, remember, we regrouped over here, right? We, so we took from the, from the 8,000, we, we took 1,000, right, and broke it up into 10 hundreds to give us that extra set of 10 hundreds here to make that 13. We then went 13 minus 9 to give us 4, okay? In the thousands row, column, we did 7 minus one to give us six, and then we subtracted four from six so, to give us such two. Right. To answer the question for number two, why did you need to regroup a second time? So you might have thought, 
There are not enough hundreds to subtract, so I needed to regroup eight thousands as seven thousands and ten hundreds. Right on. That's exactly what we just did. For question three, we need to look at the model and write your answer for problem one in the box as shown uh, for the top number and then add to finish solving the problem. Regroup when you needed to. Did your work look something like this? If it did, good stuff. We're in a good spot, everybody. Great work. For number four, is your sum in problem three the same as the number you subtracted from in problem one? Yes, it should be. Great. And is your pro answer to problem one correct? Yes, it is as well. Awesome. All right, now here we go. Question five. How is using addition to check an answer to a subtraction problem different than using estimation? Well, remember when you estimate, you see if your answer is close. When you add, you see if your answer exactly matches. So if your response sounds something just like that, good stuff. Question six. I'm going to go ahead and read this and give you a moment to pause and think. Look back at your try it. Think about your discussion with classmates and look back at the first model it and connect it problem one. Describe what you like or do not like about using the standard algorithm compared to other strategies you have seen in this lesson or used in the past to solve subtraction problems. Go ahead and pause, get your reflection down, and come back. For this reflection, you might have said something along the lines of, I like using the subtraction algorithm because I know what order to subtract the place values in. I can show all the steps in the problem at once, and I can easily show the regrouping above the problem. If yours sounds something along those lines, cool. If it sounds a little bit different, that's awesome too. It's an opportunity for you to share your thinking on paper. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward. Now we're going to the apply it. So I'm going to be, asked, I'm going to be on page 84. Let me go to re redo this part two. All right. Now we're moving on to our apply it, page 84. I'm going to read the problem to you, and then you're going to work independently when we're done. Okay, so problem number seven find the difference 13,390 minus 11,567. Remember to show your work. Problem eight, what is the difference of 129,027 and 98,918? A, 20,109, B, 30,102, C, 30,109, or D, 227,945. Finally, our exit ticket. Here we go. Last one, number nine. Find the difference, 80,508 minus 31,632. Use addition or estimation to check your answer. Show your work. Great job today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time, and we will see you next time.